Hello. Um, I just want to talk about Kelman syndrome. Um, I'm 53. I was diagnosed with Kelman syndrome when I was 23. Uh, that up to that point, I was labelled as a late bloomer because I hadn't started puberty, and the doctors I'd seen up to that stage just said, "You're a late bloomer. Wait and see." I'm just going to do this video live like this. I'm not going to edit or anything silly like that. I'm just going to talk, and if people want to listen, I'm always happy to talk, but. I just want to just talk about a few things, and if people want to see it, we can. So, yeah, I'm 53 now, 23 diagnosed after university, and when I started my first job. So at that point, I knew I had poor hearing, I knew I couldn't smell, but nobody had linked that to lack of puberty. So I, I, childhood was normal, as far as I know, regular sort of stuff, but I just didn't start developing as teenagers normally do. And we just told doctors, say, wait and see, so go wait and see. But then he found out later it was Kerman syndrome, so I didn't start treatment until I was 23. And that made a difference, because then you start getting testosterone, which you should have had when you were 14. and then So I didn't go through normal puberty, so I was still infertile. And to get fertile, I would have to go into a different form of treatment, and that only lasts as long as the treatment lasts. I have used it in clinical trials, but... I've not needed to be fertile, so I've not been on it since. We can do it. So I've been on testosterone treatment since I was 23, and that makes a difference. But low testosterone is... See, testosterone is not a vital hormone for life. It's the same as estrogen for the women. It's not vital for life, but it really does affect the quality of life having low testosterone. It affects concentration, energy levels, sleep patterns, libido... And there's risk of diabetes and osteoporosis if you've got low testosterone. So I could carry on the rest of my life with no testosterone, but it wouldn't be like a good quality of life. And I can certainly feel a difference when I'm on testosterone. And I've used different methods over the years. Gels, injections, patches, tablets, capsules. I'm on gel at the moment, so it means I have to take gel every day to get a hopefully fairly normal testosterone level. Um, yeah, diagnosed at 23. So I met my first fellow patient at 24, and he had set up a patient support group because he had never met anybody else with a condition. So he set up a very useful support group, and this was back in the early 1990s. And he set up a very good website, information book, patient meetings, which I attended. And he did a lot of work on his own, unfortunately, to set up this patient support group. And since then, I... I met him then, but I wasn't much help to him with the patient support group at that time, which I do regret now, but I could have, I could have been a lot more help to him. But since then, I have developed... Uh, I do like being a patient advocate or patient, being a part of a patient support group, so I like talking to fellow patients and meeting fellow patients when I can. And I like giving out information on the physical, aspect, physical and medical aspects of the condition. I did a bit of endocrinology when I was at university, so I know the basics, and I talk to doctors, specialists in America, Europe, and here in the UK. So I've gained a bit of information on the basics of, gene of Kalman syndrome, the genetics and all that. So I think I can give out information to patients and help them with their inf discussions with doctors, especially when newly diagnosed, to try and ask the right questions and what treatment's available, and to try and help with information. I enjoy... I don't know if joy is the right word, but well, I do. I, do. I enjoy being part of that. I enjoy helping other patients get diagnosed and talk to them about their condition and what, how they've experienced it and what other treatments they could be on, just to help with information. I think it's part of my treatment as well. Uh, one of my doctors used to call it a cathartic experience, being able to talk about your own condition to help others, and I think it does help. Because it's not an easy condition to talk about puberty and fertility and to admit like like a 30... Somebody's infertile is very difficult for people to admit, especially for both, for both males and females. And to, for, to be able to talk about you haven't gone through puberty normally. And there's physical and emotional sides of that which are difficult to go into on a video like this. I'm very happy, willing... I talk to fellow patients a lot about this side of it, the physical and emotional side of it. It's difficult to say on a video like this, but I'm happy to talk, but it does leave you certain aspects of living difficult if you haven't gone through normal puberty and normal adolescence. Because it's not the same as being the late bloomer. 
because a late bloomer may start puberty late, but they, they will get normal puberty and normal fertility and they will be normally developed. But Kalman syndrome, you get you get stuck at a very early development stage and you just don't go through normal puberty and adolescence. And that can lead to both physical and emotional... Well, not... Well, just get held back. So, as a teenager, well, fairly normal, I think. Normal intelligence. Well, I, was, well, I wasn't super intelligent, but I was in good school and did reasonably well, but not as well as I could have done, but it was okay. But it wasn't until teenage years where I started falling back because emotionally, because Abby started growing up and started doing teenage things and I wasn't part of that group. I just didn't feel right. So I got invited to social events and then just made up excuses not to go. And eventually people stopped asking, which is, which was fair enough, but you then just get held back in your own little space. And I think these days in the internet world, it's easier to get drawn into your own space and stay on the internet and don't get involved socially. But I was diagnosed just before the start of the internet world and even then I was happy being on my own, basically. And so you miss missing out on adolescence does, did affect me and missing out on puberty and adolescence. So I didn't have a normal teenage and adult, young adult years, which difficult to look back on now, but there's slight, and then... There's bits of that where you miss out on experiences which you may have get at university or as a young adult because you just don't feel part of that group. But Which is part of the reason I do patient advocacy now is talking to the younger patients or talking to patients of all ages just to see what their experiences are and say these are mistakes that were made, these are how other people did it. Because I've, I've got friends with Kalman syndrome who are happily married, been married two or three times and have children so you can have a normal life but it's just difficult to get past that stage of being different and I think meeting and talking to fellow patients can make a difference but yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting one um, I'd like to talk about the medical side of it because I know a little bit about the hormones because it's, it's a, it is a hormonal problem but it's based in the brain rather than downstairs as it were so there's a problem between the communication hormones between the hypothalamus and the pituitary so it's, it's a, it is a hypothalamus problem. So there's a problem with the hormones there, and that sort of stops puberty and fertility from occurring. So if they restore the hormones up there, everything will eventually start working. But fertility will only work as long as you get hormones. So, but that's just something different. Um, it would have been easier if I had been diagnosed at 16, 17, but that's the way it is. I've got no reg- I can't regrets about that. It was quite happy as a, I was happy at the time. I had a happy time in university. It wasn't that bad. It was only now I could have done more, but I don't care. I think I've almost talked long enough in this video. Um, I do like talking about Kalman syndrome, only because if it helps other patients. I do go on about it a little bit, but it is a big part of my life. I do do other things. I've got my job, my cricket, travel. So I try and do that as well. But I do post about this because I try and because I like talking to other patients and helping them and. Because I've met people and talked to people I've never met otherwise, and I met some very nice people along the way, which is which is nice. But this is why I do it sometimes. I think coming up to nine minutes is long enough, so I'm going to stop there. I can't edit this. I'm just going to do it as it is and see how it goes. I'm always happy to talk personally one to one. So, but I think that's it for now. Thank you. If you got this far, thank you for listening. What should I say? Bye bye. Thank you.